Welcome to the start of this recitation series for 11785, Introduction to Deep Learning. My name is Joseph Conan and I will be giving this recitation where we'll be going over four things. First, we will look at how to create an AWS account. Second, we will download the AWS command line interface or AWS CLI. Third, we will quickly launch an instance and see its info in the terminal with the CLI. And finally, we'll shut down the instance using the CLI. We will start off here by creating a regular account, which only takes a few minutes. If I search create and activate an account in Google, we'll see this first link. These are the steps we'll be following to get the account setup done. After clicking create an AWS account, we will enter our school email, password, and username. You'll then be prompted to enter your contact information, which is required for the account setup. One or more of these methods will be used to contact you when you request for GPU access, so you must provide truthful information. I'm not showing everything I've entered personally, but you will be filling out the sections here. You are also required to enter a credit or debit card. You won't need to use it if you stick to the free resources of AWS and the coupon codes we give you but your card will be charged if you spend more than you are given. This usually happens when you do not turn off your AWS instance or use high cost resources, so be careful. Here, you will enter a phone number to receive a message to get a verification code. After we enter the security check, we will receive that verification code. Then, we will choose the free account. You can personalize your interests and roles if you like. And just like that, we have the account set up. Next, we will begin by following the steps to install the AWS command line interface. We do this so we don't have to log in all the time to manage our instances. After clicking Get Started with the AWS command line interface, we click Installing the AWS CLI. Then we click Installing the AWS CLI version 2. Then we'll click Installing on Linux or Mac OS since I'm currently on macOS. During installation, we will start with a curl, unzip, and install command. Then, once that is done, we'll confirm installation by looking at the CLI version we have. After creating our AWS account and setting up the AWS command line interface, we need to connect the two. The section to do this is called Verifying the Integrity and Authenticity of the Downloaded Files. The first of these steps is to install GPG by going to the GNUPG website. On the GNUPG website, we will go to Download and click Download. We go to GNUPG Binary Releases. And for me, I will choose Mac GPG. We click Download and then we allow the download. In a few steps, we can make our way through the Installation Manager. I'll clear the terminal here to make room. As it says, we will want to save the text on the left as a file. So, we'll do that by opening a text editor. For me, I'll use TextEdit. After saving the file, we import it to GPG using the provided command. You also have to add the path to the public key file. I have the file path to what we just made saved to my clipboard, so I'll paste it here. Then, we copy and paste the curl command. Once that's done, we'll verify with GPG. And we see an output similar to what we expect, so we're done. Now, to make the AWS CLI practically usable, we need to configure it with administrator privileges. In other words, we will be creating your first I am admin user and group, which we click here. There are quite a few steps, so bear with me. We start by going to the I am console at the link provided. Then, we sign in with the account we just created. We go to our username, mine is jconan svcmu, and click my account. When we open the page, it will start at a section that says account settings, but then we'll scroll down to where it says I am user and role access to billing information. After clicking edit, you will see a box that says activate I am access. Check the box if it isn't already, 
then choose to update. We close the page we're done with. Then we see the next step is to choose users and choose add user. We go to the I am console to do this, where it says users here. And then we see add users in blue. The name of our user will be administrator. We will check that the user will have AWS Management Console access, and we will create a custom password so we don't forget how to log in. We click Next to move on to permissions. There, we click Create Group. The group name will be Administrators, and we will search and choose the policy called Administrator Access. Once checked, we create group. We go Next to Tagging, and you can optionally add a tag here. Next, we review what we have done. Everything looks good here, so I'll click Create User, and success, we're done with that. And this is where we want to get an access key and a secret access key. We go back to the I am dashboard and again click on users, click administrator, then we click security credentials, and then we click create access key. Here you will see your access key ID and secret access key. These will only be shown once, so make sure you save them. I recommend downloading the CSV file in a secure location, or if you like, you can take a screenshot of the keys. I'll unhide the secret access key, copy it, and take a screenshot now. Since we're done with that, we'll go back, and we're close to finishing up the configuration. Now, looking at the instructions, we see all we need to do is type AWS configure. Since we downloaded the AWS CLI 2, we'll have to type AWS 2 configure. This will prompt us for a few things. The AWS access key ID and secret access key we just got. So we'll enter those here. Next, we will choose our default region, which depends on where you're watching this video from. I'm on the West Coast, so I'll be entering US West 2. Then we save as a JSON and we're done. Now, just so we can run through an example of what we can do, we'll quickly fire up an EC2 instance. Typing AWS2 EC2 describe instances, we see that we don't have any EC2 instances available, so we'll have to set one up. First, we'll sign into the console. Under Services, we'll choose EC2. After clicking Launch Instances, we'll be directed to choose our configuration. We will choose the AWS Deep Learning AMI for Ubuntu 18. Next, we'll choose the T2 Micro. Finally, we'll review and launch. We will be prompted to create a key, but we'll want to save that in a secure location. Now, we see it running, and let's see what it looks like in the command line interface. Typing AWS2 EC2 describe instances, we can look at the new information for the instance. We'll notice that it says the status is running, which is to be expected. You can see here that the instance ID in the CLI is the same as in the management console. Now that we're done and want to turn off the instance, we'll enter AWS EC2 stop instances and put the instance ID. Then we wait a bit. Now, if we describe the instance again, we see that its status is stopped. While we're here, I'll show you just how easy it is to switch from a non-GPU to a GPU instance type. Under Actions, Instance Settings, and change instance type, we're given the list of options. I'll choose my favorite, the G4DNX large, which is around 50 to 60 cents per minute if the instance is running. Finally, we'll look at the instance information again to see the changes. And now we can see that the instance type is updated from T2 micro to the G4DNX large. You won't have access to the G4DNX large if it's your first time using AWS, but we'll show you how to set one up in the later recitations. Thanks for watching, and again, welcome to 11785 Intro to Deep Learning.